let us remember that we are in the holy presence of God. Dear Lord, we pray for your comfort, for your strength during these challenging and anxious times. We pray for the, your healing and protection upon all those who are affected by the coronavirus. We pray for your healing and your comfort for all those who are alone or unable to see family members at this time or friends. We pray for our LaSalle community. We pray for all those in need of prayer this day. And we pray this in your name, Jesus. Amen. St. John Baptist de La Salle, pray for us. Live Jesus in our hearts forever. So Jesus' baptism marks the beginning of his mission. And this is noted in each of the four Gospels, which we will take a look at a little more closely. But just keep in mind that all four Gospels use Jesus' baptism as the starting point of his ministry. John's role is significant and probably a little bit obvious here. John the Baptist, he is the one who baptizes Jesus. And that's essentially his role, to come before and announce the coming of the Messiah. There were some people who asked John, who are you? Are you the Messiah? And he says, no, I am not even worthy to untie his sandals. John's role is primarily to announce the coming of the Messiah and call people to repentance, um, to prepare their hearts and their minds for this Messiah, this messianic age where God is going to be doing something new and fulfilling the prophecies of the Old Testament. Please make note of John's clothing and his diet, and in particular the clothing, the garment of camel's hair and this leather belt, that would have signified to the first century audience, a Jewish audience for John, that he has come in the spirit of Elijah, one of the great prophets of the Old Testament. So we already have one parallel between John the Baptist and Elijah, the Old Testament prophet. And the Jordan River itself was a, also a significant place for the Jewish people, a symbol of Jewish freedom. It was the point of entry where Joshua led the Israelites into the Promised Land after 40 years wandering in the wilderness. If you take a look at the image in the map on this slide, you'll notice some familiar places. Jericho, the oldest city on record that we know of, according to archaeologists, is the city that Joshua and the Israelites took over in that familiar, hopefully familiar story of Rahab, who assisted the Israelites. And obviously Jerusalem is where the temple is centered, Bethlehem, the birth of Jesus, and uh, Qumran, that is where the Essenes would have been located in that area. Um, where the Dead Sea Scrolls were later discovered. I think it's also key to note here that the Dead Sea is the lowest place on the face of the earth at over 1,300 feet below sea level. It is very symbolic, I think, of Jesus really humbling himself, lowering himself to take on our humanity, and not only that, but being baptized in the waters near the lowest place on earth. I think this is certainly something we can take note of and learn from um, and try to model the same humility in our lives as Jesus does throughout his. What occurs during this momentous occasion in the beginning of Jesus's ministry is really a manifestation of the Holy Trinity. And um, it's what we call a theophany, uh, which basically means a manifestation of or a revelation of God. And in this case, we see these, fam these same elements occur in each of the Gospels uh, in a little bit of a different way in the Gospel of John. But the opening of the sky, 
the descent of the spirit in the form of a dove and a voice that cries out from the sky, you are my beloved son with whom I am well pleased. The voice here representing the voice of God the Father, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, and obviously Jesus the Son. So this is a, a huge moment, a huge revelation here of the Holy Trinity as well. Now we might ask ourselves, why was Jesus baptized? If he never sinned, why did he need a baptism that was essentially for sinners in need of repentance? Well, we'll offer two reasons here. Number one, he completely enters into our human experience. In other words, he completely immerses himself um, in the human experience so that we may truly identify with him and he may truly identify with us. And number two, he models humility. He submits to the Father's will and, and that's basically our path that we need to follow in order to um, enter into relationship with God the Father in a healthy, holy, and joyful way. So just to recap for you all, and I hope this wasn't too boring for you, it's important to remember and know that the baptism really marks the beginning of Jesus's ministry. All four Gospels um, are in agreement on this point. Secondly, there are some typology moments. John the Baptist prepares the way for Jesus, and he certainly echoes um, the physical and spiritual characteristics of one of the major Old Testament prophets in Elijah. The Jordan River plays a key role in Jewish history, and certainly that is not lost on the audience as John is baptizing in that same river. And to know and be familiar with the elements of this theophany of the Holy Trinity being revealed in the baptism of Jesus with the voice of the Father, the Holy Spirit in the form of a dove, and obviously Jesus as the beloved Son of the Father. Lastly, Jesus' baptism. Why? Well, he identifies with us in every way except for sin, and he demonstrates and models humility for us as well. So everything I've covered on this slideshow here corresponds to pages 87 through 89 in your textbook. It would probably serve you well to read over those few pages. And I have also attached a PDF of a printout with the four accounts of Jesus's baptism. There is a Google Doc with some questions to answer. And I'm actually going to take a look at that briefly with you right now. So this slide here has an image of that printout that I've attached as a PDF. You could potentially just have this image in front of you here. Um, but this is the text that you need as you are answering those questions. So everything in this slide is all the information you'll need. You'll notice the PDF has some more information at the very bottom that you don't really need to answer the questions on that Google Doc. So I just wanted to point that out of course, if you have any questions, send me an email. And I do plan on having a Zoom live session tomorrow just to touch base. And if you have any questions about anything and just kind of see how everybody's doing with this online learning trial. So hope all is well and look forward to catching up soon.